Mm -hmm. So hello everyone, my name is Sadok, I'm from the University of Passau, and today I'll be presenting our paper with the title um, Does my BFT a protocol implementation scale in collaboration with Christian Berger from the University of Passau and Hans Heiser from the University of Reykjavik. So in the recent years, the application of distributed ledger technology outside of the cryptocurrency sphere has renewed interest in the Byzantine fault tolerant state machine replication protocols, as they offer the same resilience as the still widely used proof of work, while being uh, much more performant. However, these protocols were designed to be used in much, much smaller scales. And as a consequence, modern research focuses on enhancing the scalability or tuning the performance under geographic dispersion. So during the development and testing phases of these protocols, they are tested rigorously under various scenarios in order to ensure that they meet the needs of their newly envisioned domain of application. So developers would commonly use uh, a test network for this. However, one can use simulations. Uh, these, uh, these are uh, much cheaper. They offer much more flexibility. And they offer also precise control over the simulation environment. And in many cases, they offer us also perfect reproduci reproducibility of the results. So our goals in this paper is to study the cost-friendly simulations as an approach to evaluate and validate PFTSM or protocol implementations at scale. So uh, this would involve a best effort simulation of realistic scenarios in order to better understand the constraints and also using simulations as a means to reason about how different factors affect performance. So we would also like to take the opportunity to compare different PFT protocols with each other using our simulations. So we have formulated the following research questions for our work. So the first one being, what are the properties of an ideal evaluation tool for the blockchain generation of PFT protocols? And the second one being, can simulations help us reason about the behavior of real BFT protocol implementations at scale? So using previous works, we have compiled a list of properties that, in our opinion, an ideal simulator in this context should exhibit. So the first one being application layer realism. And what this means is that we would like to have no re-implementation effort involved and we do not like to use abstractions. So BFT SMR protocols are already hard enough to implement and any re-implementation runs the risk of introducing bugs. So uh, secondly, we'd like to have realistic networking. Uh, what we mean is that we want to be able to specify several networking aspects such as latency, uh, bandwidth, and so on. We would also like to be able to simulate a large number of nodes, hence we require scalability. We would like our uh, simulator to be resource friendly and to offer us control over the simulation environment and have our results reproducible across hosts. So lastly, we would like to have attacker facilities in order to be able to conduct attacks on our protocols. So we have conducted a survey of state-of-the-art tools and we have noticed that uh, there are trade-offs uh, here either by requiring some re-implementation effort or some expensive resources by using pure, uh, pure emulators. So now we take a look at Phantom. So Phantom is, in our opinion, an ideal uh, simulator for this context. It fulfills all of our requirements except for attacker facilities, but we can always extend it later on. So Phant Phantom is a hybrid simulator. So it runs in virtual time, completely decoupled from our real time. And it simulates uh, system facilities, such as time and sockets, using lightweight implementations. And it executes real code and uses system call and deception techniques in order to plug the protocols in the simulator. So um, we have noticed that running phantom sim simulations can be relatively tedious. There are many steps to this. So one would first need to generate a phantom config to specify the virtual hosts and then generate the phantom network specification. And this is essentially a network graph containing all of the nodes 
uh, with the host bandwidth, the inter-host latencies and packet loss. Uh, we would then have to build the protocol binaries and generate the artifacts and pass the appropriate arguments. Then we would start the simulation at last and monitor the resource usage. So this has left much room for automation, which is why we have wrote up Delphi BFT. And this is essentially a front end towards Phantom to automate large scale simulations of BFT, uh, unmodified BFT protocol implementations. It merely requires a simple experiments description file as input. And we can see an example of this on the right hand side. We have here this EDF and an EDF contains an experiments array where each entry describes an experiment that we wish to conduct. So, uh, and for each experiment, we have here several objects. For example, in the network object, we are able to specify the bandwidths and we can also assign, for example, uh, replicas to certain AWS regions. And we also have the replicant client objects and these are protocol specific but common settings uh, include the number of replicas, the block size, the payload, and so on. So the structure of Delphi BFT is relatively simple. At the center of everything, we have the orchestrator, which is a manager entity towards all the other components. We have the environment generator, which is responsible for uh, generating the phantom config and the network specification. We have the protocol connectors, uh, and these are to, uh, these are used to configure our protocols in order to hook them in the simulator. So presently, we support Hot Stuff, Themis, which is an implementation of PBFT and BFT Smart. But we can always uh, extend this, as uh, as we said. Uh, so also, uh, we have a resource monitor to monitor the resource usage, and we have a plotter to visualize the results. So now to answer the second research question, we would like to examine the accuracy of our approach by mimicking deployments from previous works. So we would use our simulation results and compare them to real world performance measurements of these protocols, uh, while also measuring the resource usage of our simulations to examine Phantom's resource friendliness. So we will also briefly compare these BFT protocols with each other using our simulation results. So for our setup, we are using an Ubuntu virtual machine with 34 vCPU at 2.4 gigahertz and 232 gigabytes of RAM. And we are using Delphi BFT with Shadow version 2.2. Our protocols of interest are Hot Stuff, BFT Smart, and PBFT. So um, our first experiment is one from the hot stuff paper and in, the, in this experiment we are gradually uh, scaling up the number of replicas from four to one 128 so the replicas are co-located in the same data center so we have a local area network setting and we are using here a payload of 1024 bytes and a block size of 400. So now to see how our simulation results compare to the real world results, we take a look here at simulated hot stuff with the diamond markings and the real world hot stuff with the triangle markings. And at about four replicas, we observe a relatively large performance difference of around 86 K ops per second. However, this difference gradually shrinks as the system scale grows, uh, dropping to a mere 2.5k ops per second at um, 128 replicas. So for the others, so for PBFT, BFT Smart, and BFT Smart, we observe a similar pattern. So a relatively large performance difference again that shrinks as the system scale grows and drops to a mere 0.9k ops per second difference. So the reason for this is that Phantom is not able to model computational costs. And at, this, uh, at these small scales, these computational costs play a large role in dictating performance. However, as the system scale grows, the performance becomes dictated by the underlying network. And this is where Phantom becomes accurate, very accurate, actually. So um, now for a brief comparison, we notice that at this small scale, PBFT outperforms 
the other protocols, but it, its throughput drops swiftly as the system scale grows, as it is relatively bandwidth hungry compared to hot stuff, and hot stuff outperforms all protocols at the end. Uh, so it is also worth noting that PBFT and BFT Smart achieve a nearly identical uh, performance at scale, and this is because of their very similar transaction patterns. So um, next up, we are conducting a simulation of uh, BFT Smart in a highly dispersed environment. So in this setting, we are operating replicas in Oregon, Ireland, Sao Paulo, and Sydney. And we are also operating a client in each of these regions that we use to measure the end-to-end -end latency. So uh, taking a look at the results, we observe that for the simulated settings, uh, the latency is somewhat higher than the real-world settings, but this is not too dramatic. So for the end-to-end -end latency, we have an average deviation of 2.5%. And for the consensus latency, we have an, uh, a uh, so a difference of a mere 12 milliseconds. So now to conclude our presentation, so we have seen that state-of-the-art tools have made some trade-offs, either by requiring some re-implementation effort or expensive resources for large experiments. Uh, we have presented Delphi BFT, which acts as a front-end towards Phantom, to automate large scale uh, simulations of unmodified BFT protocol implementations. Uh, and we have seen that we can faithfully predict the performance of these protocols once it, once it is dictated by the underlying network. And this is eventually the case as the system scale grows. But in cases where we use empty payloads or where the system scales are somewhat small, uh, Phantom is somewhat inaccurate due to the computational costs not being captured. This is, however, uh, this should change in the near future. There is some work being done in this context. So lastly, please check out our paper and our code on the GitHub repository. Otherwise, that was it from my side and giving back to you.